Okay, this is for Tia Aquacana or Caney. She's on YouTube and she's a uh, really good uh, a a forecast astrologer. I think she's doing and it's for an astrologer. She does bar charts. She's really cool. Check her out. Subscribe to her. She'll be in the link in the description below, or maybe even in the comments. I don't know. She's groovy. She's doing a birth chart for me, too, so check out her channel. It'll be in the links below. Okay. She's actually a sun in cancer. My dog's a cancer. <laughs> and her sun sign is in the 12th house, which is ruled by Pisces, the soul, and security, the hidden knowledge. And her 12th house is in Gemini. So she's a messenger in the spirit, I guess. Her moon, okay, and her rising sun. Her rising is in Leo, and her moon is in Leo. And um, her moon is in her rising sign as well, and so is her Mercury is in Cancer. So she puts a voice to emotions. No, her Mercury's in Leo, sorry. Her Mercury's in Leo, so she can explain things very well. I love a Mercury in Leo because they can explain things very well, whether they know what they're trying to explain or not, they are ex they explain themselves perfectly more than anybody else, more than I could. And it's in a rising sign, so she might keep up with me talking and talking and stuff because I have Gemini Cuss Cancer Rising, so I'm a fast talker and crash into different subjects and stuff, so whatever. So she might be very, very informative, and um, she might be informative right away and have a bridge of communication of things to talk about. And... Uh, she will get attention for what she talks about. People will listen to her. And uh, her third house, is, which is her hands, and how she thinks and communicates as well, and her communities and her neighbors, is in Virgo. So she might talk in more of a charming way, in more of a perfect way, more of a, like a virgin way, you know, not like a rated R way. It would be more appropriate way of talking about things, even if it could be shady or something, it's still an appropriate way. And in an analytical way, she thinks about stuff she wants to talk about and analyzes it or something and puts it in there. And you know what I mean? And she might be a very super good publisher and a good writer because her third house is in Virgo. <sighs> That's what she probably has. And um, I don't see anything in her third house that I know of, maybe some asteroids, I'm not sure yet. But, um, so her moon is in her rising sign as well, so her moon is in Leo, which means her mother was her biggest fan, or, <clears throat> if I'm talking to you, then that is, maybe she's your biggest fan or something, she probably put you in plays and stuff, and saw your potential, and, um, put you into sports, probably, um, because it's in your first house, or the Aries, you know, and, um, she... Also, probably your fourth house is also in Libra. So at home, you're probably like a fake hypocrite <laughs> and your mom probably treated you like an inanimate object or something. You probably are a lot different at home with, you know, you balance your home, I guess, of course. Um, put you in the middle of situations um, where you had to be the medium in between people. There, like your Saturn is an Aquarius, and it's in the seventh house of relationships with the by Libra as well. Your seventh house is Aquarius, so you're going to attract everyone like your father. You're going to attract everyone that's a weirdo and knows things and astrologers, which is something that you want because your Saturn is an Aquarius and you'll learn lessons while you are teaching astrology or learning astrology and, um, you could be given knowledge and it could be taken away from you. You might even get Alzheimer's. Your eighth house is in Aquarius. This is your death house. Um, so you might have Alzheimer's or something. Hopefully not when you die or something like that. Um, okay. Um, um, your fifth, your sixth house is um, Sagittarius. So you're probably always looking for a new place to live. And um, um, I let my dog again. Anyways, you're probably, um, always, like, traveling, even if 
your friends are um, still with you. Obviously, you probably are still loyal to your friends, but, you know, if they just die and you have to make new ones or something. They don't die, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, um, they might be taken away from you and given to you. Like, opportunities because of Saturn and its restrictions and life lessons. Your Mars? Okay. You, um... Your fifth house is in Scorpio, so that's the relationship with children, too. <clears throat> so you might be more, you might treat them more like an adult, because, and they're old enough to know better or something, like, as kids. They might as well be taught knowledge that an adult already knows, so they can be prepared. Because secretly, your seventh house is in uh, Aquarius, and your eighth house is in Aquarius. When you die, you'll be well known as knowing everything. Um, being an astrologer queen or something, probably. Who knows? Whatever. Um, uh, and because Saturn can give you this major opportunity to be this awesome astrologer, too, but you'll have restrictions on it for some reason, which sucks to have restrictions on it, but it, um, oh my gosh, your Uranus and it's in Capricorn, and your Neptune's in Capricorn, so you might like cameras, obviously, and, um, your Mars is in Taurus, which is how you get mad in your sexual expression. And it's in the 10th house, Aries. Your public image. And, um, you, so you're probably forced to make your relationships be in the 10th house and in your public side. You, you put all your effort and willpower into making them become part of your, um, career and have them work with you and stuff. And it also means that your temper, it can be, um, um, well, it could be quick, or it could be, um, subtle, like, it, or it could be, like, um, you don't want to get mad because you don't want to, like, upset anybody because you might also use them for your career. You might, you know, you might, um, have them work for you or something, too, or something. You, 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 uh, you, or they might buy your girl stock cookies or something. I don't know, and you don't want to eliminate the pleasures in life, but if they nitpick at you, nitpick at you, bully you, bully you, it takes you a while to get mad. And then, bam, you explode, and you're really powerful, and you might, um, everyone will see your sexual side, too. You might have to express on your 10th house astrology roles, stuff like that. Maybe you can share your knowledge about that. Um, my Mars is in the 10th house, too. Who knows? Whatever. Um, your Pluto is in Scorpio secrets. Um, okay, your, um... Pluto is in the one, two, the fourth house of home secrets. So you might have been sexualized secretly at the home, or you, or something like that. And um, but your fourth house is in Libra, so your mother, she's usually like an inanimate object, or whatever. And your Saturn in the court, so your dad was either a friend, or he restricted you on going out with uh, people, or he tried to force you to. Um, marry somebody you didn't want to marry, and, um, you could be given opportunities to have, um, be married, and it could be taken away from you. You might have challenges in your marriage, your partnerships, because your Saturn's in the 7th house of other people, and your shadow self that you might have to deal with, and, um, so, um, which is very Aquarian-like, I suppose, um, which is a big planet, Saturn, rules for your chart. Your Jupiter is in Virgo, and I think it's in the second house, Leo. So, you live to your, you're very lucky with living to your own abundance. You could be a farmer in those clothes, in that Virgo, or whatever. It's clueless. Um, you could, uh, be very lucky with, um, your day-to-day -day routines. It's probably, you're probably really good at it, and you're probably really good at your health, and good at, you know, your body's probably naturally healthy. You probably don't have to worry about, um, maybe you're, um, you have a good sense of smell, too. Um, since it's in the second house, and, um, I'm going to head to myself. You're, um, I'm walking all over myself. Okay. So, like, you might have been moving a lot, even still close to your friends, up and it'd be a challenge for some reason in this chart. Um, your ninth house is in Pisces. When you go to sleep, you, um, um, 
I don't know, hopefully don't do poisonous stuff before you go to sleep or whatever. I don't know, people take sleep pills before they go to sleep, but I don't know, because, you know, ice nectin rolls, drugs, and poison, all them delusional bullshit. And you might be very spiritual, you might have psychic dreams, though, when you go to bed. Your 11th house is in Taurus. So, you have beautiful friends, you are beautiful, you're stable around your friends in the social media world, too, and maybe you'll gain money there, and then, um, um, your purpose is in Capricorn, which is like the 10th house, and, um, let's see, it's in the 6th house of perfection, um, of different, of daily work, um, but the 10th house is like harder work, I guess, and, but it's still your career, and, um, maybe your purpose was to travel, <laughs> and to have a good reputation, and be more fathering, you already learned all about being cancer, and being mothering, nursing, maybe you had siblings, that you had to take care of every day, um, maybe, uh, cause your third house is in Virgo, and you have Lilith and Aquarius, which means you have multiple orgasms. Once they regenerate, they want to do it again and again and again. That's crazy. And it's in the 12th house. Of, well, no, it's not the 12th house. It's in the, I hate numerology numbers, you're so dumb. It's in the 7th house of other people. You see other people being rebellious and weird and you're like, I'm not like that, but then again, you are, and you'll probably have to be, because the challenges that Saturn Aquarius gave you, that you probably were your own independent person, you probably wanted to move out when you were a child, because, and your purpose is to have discipline and stuff, and if you reach that first to grow up fast, then that's probably what happened. And... Uh, and be on camera, yay, because Neptune, Capricorn, Pisces, whatever. Um, your Ceres is in Aquarius, so people come to you for your friendship, people come to you for your knowledge, people, uh, that's how they heal through you, and, um, people, and their, um, weird, unusual, awkward, outcast selves. Come to you because you um, understand them, and then you are a mother nourishing cancer, so you would welcome them in your soul because it's in the twelfth house. Um, um, communicate with them. I'm being informative for them. You know, um, maybe you could be a massage therapist with your son in the twelfth house. Your crown is in Leo, so you have to. Always work on how you react to people because they're probably scared of you. And um, also um, the tension that you get that you got to be careful of where the tension is with you, I guess. Um, you might get good attention or bad attention um, or be it and or something kind of be insecure about that. Uh, and you will you have. Also, you shine on other people's insecurities, or you you attend to them, and you uh, bring out their hidden talents or whatever. And um, you you have Pallas and Sagittarius. Your creative projects is with um, um, like gambling with life and foreigner people or something, and just higher learning and knowledge is your creative projects, I guess. Your Juno is in Taurus, so you would be financially secure in a marriage or something. Your Vis is in Virgo. You have the gift of living to an abundance and turn everything a product and selling your own items and stuff like that. I guess your fortune is Leo. You get this on our attention very easily. I don't know, whatever. Your stuff not as in Cancer. I've already seen say that. I wish I could know what houses you're at asteroids in, but it'll take me fucking for a long time. I don't know. My ADD is really out there. Uh, okay. Your Uranus is in the house of... Okay. So 
Pisces. And so is your Neptune. So it's your life purpose. The sixth house. Can I do your routine? It's kind of thing. Weird. And perfection. Purity of mind. Okay. Um, well, that's the story of that's the glory of love. I forgot what else I was supposed to tell you. Or what I was wanting to tell you. But that's cool. Purity. Thanks. Oh yeah, your Venus is in Cancer. That means you are so loving and spoiling to your partner. And it's also in the 12th house, Gemini. Which means you treat everyone like your soulmate. You are um, very welcoming and mothering. And you do things that people need to appreciate. My dog's a Cancer. Scorpio rising. Moon in Capricorn. And she also has Venus in Cancer. And so you treat all your relationships like they're your family, you know, and you want your mother's approval of your, um, partner or something, um, and you might stray away from them if you don't get your parents' approval, and your, your dad is probably, whether puts you into, uh, um, studying more than relationships or whatever, but, which is weird, I don't know, or he could have been your friend, I don't know, um, but, um, yeah, um, and your mo mom was probably the same way, <laughs> trying to set you up with other people or something, who knows, um, but, um, every day is an unusual day for your new reputation, and that's sweet, Venus and Cancer is one of my favorite placements on how people treat others, um, um, which is something that they need to be appreciated for and the people don't go, and it goes unnoticed, kind of. Um, but that's really cool that it's like, you would, you would welcome people in, feed them and, you know, nourish them and make them feel like they're not um, alone with being adopted or something or whatever. And maybe you have a beautiful home because your fourth house is in Libra, um, but still, you have this thing where you move around a lot and stuff when your mom is like your friend or something, your fan. Well, that's cool. That's the story of that's glory of love. Thank you ever so kindly and sorry if this sucked. I have no clue. I should have done it all better. I don't know. Um, thank you ever so kindly. <laughs> Toodles.